Yo, today is December 6th, 6th, 2022. Welcome to Simply Bitcoin Live. We're your number one source for the peaceful Bitcoin revolution, the cover breaking news, culture, mematic warfare. We will be your guide through the separation of money and state. Very special show lined up for you guys today. Jack Dorsey and Jack Maulers are in Africa and uh, they're definitely spreading the Bitcoin gospel. I, I've been telling you guys, right, the Bitcoin revolution is really going to happen in countries and places that are incentivized by something other than speculation to adopt Bitcoin. And I think whether that's Central America, South America, Africa, uh, just because their local fiat currencies are such garbage, uh, people really see Bitcoin and they see Bitcoin not as a speculation, which is the reason that we see this most of the reason that we see Bitcoin in the West, we see it from that lens, right? It's like, oh, this is great. But they see it because they don't have an alternative, right? So it, it's about whether they can put food on the table or not, right? And and what what is that but not the best incentive, right? So we're gonna talk about that today. We also have the one, the only, the big Sean Harris. How you doing, buddy? Doing great, man. I'm excited to be here on the best daily show in Bitcoin, Simply Bitcoin with Nico and Opti. I'm so pumped to be here. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, speaking of Opti, always optimistic. Drinking the water. How you doing, Opti? Well, what's up, guys? Uh, man, you know, it's a good day when we got Big Sean Harris on the show. He is not only the goat of memes out there, but he is oh. a fan of what I like to call uh, the life philosophy of proof of work. So you already know that today's culture is going to be morphed around all of Big Sean's wisdom on Twitter because, man, he just lives proof of work. So I think this is a good example of what I try to say every single day, man. Be a shining example of being a Bitcoiner, and Big Sean is one of those people. So shouts out to you, bro. Hey. Awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. All right, everybody, let's start the show. Let's do this. The Bitcoin Numbers brought to you by noddle at this point you should be running your own bitcoin node if you don't use your own bitcoin node you're trusting someone else's run your own version of bitcoin core the lightning network whirlpool and dojo all from the comfort of your own home and if you're a digital nomad you have absolutely no excuse because now you can run a noddle through a virtual private server visit noddle.eu today all right. At the time of recording, the Bitcoin price is 16,950 sats per dollar. We're at 5,900 block height, 766,169 reachable Bitcoin nodes, 15,105 blocks to the halving, 73,831 having estimate April 25th, 2024 total lightning network capacity 5070 bitcoin roughly 86 million us dollars realized monetary inflation bitcoin conti continues to take fiat currencies to absolute school we're sitting pretty at 1.76% and the market capitalization of bitcoin right now we're sitting at 326 billion dollars man it's awesome anyways we had this awesome bitcoiner on simply a long time ago like 6 7 months ago and he spoke at the, I do not want to butcher the name, so I'm going to pull it up because Nico has a tendency of doing that. Um, he spoke at the Africa Bitcoin conference and there was a lot of other people there as well, right? We're going to get to that during the news, but the name of the gentleman is Abu Bakar and he was dropping the hot sauce when he came on simply. And he said something at the Africa Bitcoin conference that I think you guys would find useful. Let's check out the clip and then we will talk about it. Things are immediately important. I think is the value that you get from your career path as well as how sustainable it is like job security wise for us specifically. And I think if you're looking at the landscape of possible career choices, when it comes to Bitcoin, I think is probably the most, I guess the career pathway that has the most longevity long-term. Because at the end of the day, it's the tool that I personally believe will lead us to financial freedom on the continent. So if you think about it at that sort of long time horizon, it means all the jobs that you're getting right now, you're essentially keying into the long-term battle for financial freedom. And I think that's probably the most powerful, I guess, point we could provide or at least highlight to people that are thinking about careers in general, which is 
if you want to really help out long term, the easiest way is to actually get a Bitcoin career or a Bitcoin job early if you really want to get into the fight for financial freedom. Okay, some sauce, some sauce. I like that. Um, I agree. I mean, I, I definitely took that choice personally. Uh, Opti kind of ran into that. Um, Big Sean likes basketball, so he's going to have to figure out how to. Uh, I mean, if not, what when you finish your career. Everything's basketball, Nico. I know that's true. Everything is basketball. So is Bitcoin. Every, if, everything is basketball. So you know, I gotta worry about it. <laughs> so when you when you finish playing professional basketball, Big Sean, all right, would you consider working a big full time? Of course. Like it, yeah. it's like asking, it's like asking, you know, is the world gonna go towards the internet? Like the world's going towards Bitcoin. Everyone's gonna be working some type of Bitcoin job eventually. I love that. Yeah, everything's and and I, I think Abu Bakr like hit the nail on the head, right? I look, I, I you know, in the case of myself, right? You know, I I started mining when I got into Bitcoin, that went pretty well. Then I started the Simply Bitcoin show, that went pretty well. And then you know that led me to uh, where I work right right now, which is Swan, which is you know crazy how many opportunities open up for you, uh, especially if you you know you work your you work your butt off you work your tail off and uh, you know uh you get on the mission right you, you you're you spreading the bitcoin the peaceful bitcoin revolution man and i i and i i don't think that you need to be a developer i don't think that you need to have this crazy formal background i just think that you know if you if you commit to it if you put in <laughs> basketball if you commit to it you put enough mental effort and energy into something i think that there's so many opportunity in this space man I, I, I can't count them. And I think he's a shining example of that. Uh, well, thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I look, I was going to say, you know, basically echo what he said, uh, you know, Bitcoin is the strongest money in the world. And so therefore we should be building on the strongest foundation, which is Bitcoin. It's like building a house on solid rock. And it kind of reminds me of, you know, you kind of mentioned it already. And it's, uh, it's the idea of like the tech bubble idea where like, uh, Sean said it himself, like the internet has eaten the world and everyone is loosely related to the internet. And so if you want a future, you know, if you are young and you're trying to build a career, I, I don't see why you wouldn't want to choose Bitcoin right now. Like we are in the beginning of, in my opinion, the 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 future of of all of humanity so if we can build something right now in bitcoin like not only is it going to be a career but it's like a forever job like uh, I, don't, I don't see bitcoin slowing down i only see it becoming bigger and stronger and more uh integral to society and like big sean said you know everyone will be a bitcoiner at some point everyone will touch bitcoin in their normal everyday job and it's only a matter of time so yeah man if you guys are young out there if you guys are like me a millennial or younger definitely figure out a way to you know build a side hustle everyone loves their side hustles on the internet right now in bitcoin and maybe one day it will become your career path like man again like nico said i somehow stumbled into this and i am more than happy and excited and humbled about the fact that this is what i can do and and you know god willing and hopefully we build this so that we can do this for the rest of our lives and continue to be the bitcoin media source for you guys and keep you guys up to date like i'm i couldn't be more happier to be a bitcoiner and i've said it in the past man being in bitcoin it's given me hope it's changed my life bitcoin saved my life and i can only hope that we can spread that message for other people out there so oh yeah hold on i got you uh mr robot says uh becca i am building i am building i got you guys yes continue to build on bitcoin because bitcoin is that solid foundation and and i don't know if you guys are noticing out there but the fiat world isn't that solid foundation that bitcoin is and so I mean, if you're if you're young and you want to build on something, I definitely look into becoming a Bitcoiner, building on Bitcoin or doing something in Bitcoin because it will be a long term job. It will be a career path. Just avoid the shit coins and you'll be good. Can I? Yeah. Can I, can I jump in real quick? I just Absolutely. wanted to say yeah, like you don't have to be like a some type of dev either. Like you don't have to know 
everything about computers to build on Bitcoin. And I think that's where a lot of people may miss the boat is they think, hey, I don't have any technical skills, so I can't build on Bitcoin. But everything is going to get built on Bitcoin. So whatever you whatever you do, whatever your foundation is, your background is, you can use that to build on Bitcoin. You just have to think outside the box and and you can do it. A hundred percent. And I and I, I think that's the and another trap that you guys have to I, I, w- I would recommend trying to avoid is like the Bitcoin mentality is just totally different than the fiat mentality. And I think that seeps into every aspect of 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 society, whether that's work, you know, your career, job. So it's like once you kind of think like a Bitcoiner, then it's a lot more hopeful and the opportunities really do open up. Right. So I don't know this, my two sats, my recommendation there. Um, but anyways, all right, guys, we have a lot to talk about during the news. I'm really excited. A lot of stuff going on. Well, it is Bitcoin <laughs> stuff is how ha- Bitcoin changed my wife. <laughs> Tiagen is, oh man. Oh man. Oh man. All right, everybody, let's, let's check out the news. Let's do it. The daily news. Brought to you by Blockstream Jade, built by Bitcoiners for Bitcoiners. It's an open source hardware wallet for the cold storage of Bitcoin. Blockstream Jade houses a full color camera, allowing for fully air gapped Bitcoin transactions. Scan and display QR codes directly on the device to sign transactions and verify addresses with ease. Use your Blockstream Jade with your favorite wallet software, such as the Blockstream Green, Blue Wallet, Electrum, and Sparrow. Get yourself a Blockstream Jade today and take self custody of your Bitcoin. All right, everybody. So uh, it's really interesting. I like, you know, uh, uh, when I initially ran into this information, I thought it was more than what it was, but it turned out to be more than what I thought it was it. Um, I don't know if that makes sense. But uh, so I tweeted this out on Monday. I said, both Jack Maulers and Jack Dorsey have tweeted about Ghana in the last 24 hours. What's going on over there? Jack said, finally back in Ghana, December 5th. And Jack Maulers said, just put just posted the, 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 the flag of Ghana, December 4th. And then Sats Joseph, shout out to him. Uh, he said, the most interesting conference this year. And then he tagged... Afro, uh, Afro Bitcoin org, right? Which is the, the Twitter account for them. So I, I went to go check them out. Um, and dude, like talk about a crazy, crazy, uh, lineup of speakers. You have Ray Yosef. He's the founder and CEO of Paxful. Uh, you have Jack Dorsey, obviously everyone knows who Jack Dorsey is. You have Obi, right? Um, you have Abu Bakar, you have Jack Maulers, you have Anita, right? Uh, you have, you have um, you have Dread, right? You have Lamar, dude. It, it, it just goes on. I'm sure of missing a lot of people. Um, you also have uh, Run with uh, Run with Bitcoin. I think I saw him there as well. Alex Gladstein, right? So this is crazy. This Bitcoin conference, and I didn't know. Like I honestly, I didn't know, which is why I tweeted what I tweeted. Um, and I found some quotes for you guys, which I'm going to check out. And then I think the very the two big announcements, which is uh, announcement by Jack Maulers and then uh, announcement by Jack Dorsey. Um, so this is a quote from Jack Dorsey, I guess, when he was on stage. It says, the goal is to help the Internet realize a native currency and help the, the world realize a native. Wait, wait, wait. The goal is to help the internet realize a native currency and help the world realize a native currency and open money. We can all see, we can all trust that's not controlled by a government or corporation. Uh, Jack Dorsey and he's talking about Bitcoin, but I think this is really the sauce. I think this is the signal and I'm going to break down as to why I believe that is. So this is an article by Bloomberg. The headline says Jack Dorsey's block invests in renewable Bitcoin miner grid lists in Africa. It goes on to say Jack Dorsey's Block Inc. is among the companies contributing to a funding round for a Bitcoin miner in Africa fired by renewable power. Digital payments firm Block and venture capital investor Stillmark had led a $2 million seed investment in Gridless, a miner that harnesses small-scale renewable energy grids in rural Africa, Block said in a December 6th statement. Bitcoin mining is an energy-intensive process in which electricity-guzzling computers, I love how they frame that, secure the digital assets blockchain by validating transaction data and unlocking tokens as a reward in return. Some studies estimate that the annual energy consumption, here it is again, involves exceeds the amount entire countries like Belgium use. Hmm. goes on to say, the investment in Block's latest effort to 
push for sustainable and decentralized mining operations. It has recruited venerable crypto mining engineers and managers to build out its mining unit and develop projects can, that can encourage individuals to mine Bitcoin. Most of the computing power for Bitcoin mining is currently from industrial scale centers. Gridless seeks to harness excess energy at small scale renewable power sites in rural Africa. That out of this whole piece, I think that is the signal, that one sentence, that one phrase, right? I'm going to read it again. Gridless seeks to harness ex excess energy at small scale renewable power sites in rural Africa. According to the statement, it has contracted five project pilots in rural Kenya with Hydrobox, an African hydroelectric energy company, three of which are currently operational. Gridless plans to expand to other parts of East Africa in the near future, it said. Mining profitability is heavily dependent on energy costs. The industry has been battered by persistent Persistently high energy electricity prices, a 66% slide in Bitcoin over the past year, and stiff competition. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about the framing. Um, framing is bullshit. Uh, I gotta say that. Uh, wow. Uh, definitely trying to spin it a certain way, that's for sure. Um, specifically about, you know, Bitcoin miners using as much energy as Belgium. We all know that Bitcoin miners use excess energy. If it wasn't excess energy, it would be too expensive for them to use that that specific power. So what they do is that they tend to flock to places that produce excess energy, whether that's, you know, a, a dam, whether, you know, that's a, a nuclear power plant. Right. And that that cheap excess energy is is perfect for Bitcoin miners. And that energy was already going to waste before. Now people have figured out because of Bitcoin, you could use that otherwise wasted energy and you could somehow monetize it and you monetize it with Bitcoin. Now, the rural aspect, I think that is going to fundamentally change how humans organize, how societies are built, because think about it, right? If you if it just because you're uh, this place in the remote African savanna, right, you're in the middle of nowhere and you have abundant energy resources, that stuff is pretty much useless because it's too far away you it, there's only there, there's a limit and you lose efficiency if you transport electricity right through the cables right so it's it, it, so you lose something right there isn't a good way so what happens with with energy production is as soon as you manufacture as soon as you you make it you have to use it right then and there right um and i think the the reason that i believe this is going to change everything is for example, if you're a society in the middle of nowhere, all of a sudden that abundant, that abundant excluded energy now has value because of Bitcoin. And I think that this is the beginning of tapping in to some of the most abundant excluded energy sources in the world. And then just how mining towns were built in Colorado and all over the United States around, you know, these these mines and then they're eventually abandoned. I believe that you're going to see towns and you're going to you see civilizations and small cities be built around abundant energy sources because now they could potentially be really, really good sites to mine cheap Bitcoin. So and I think that's going to change everything. And I think it's going to I think it's going to give opportunities to societies, cities and towns that before, you know, they might be just really poor because they're just excluded from the rest of the world now. There, there's opportunity there and that opportunity once again is coming from Bitcoin. So very, very bullish uh, this news and let's see where it goes. I, even though I might say that, you know, it, in the grand scheme of things, I think two million dollars for what they're trying to do is is not that not not that much money. But I think it is hopeful and I and I and I hope that things continue to go in this direction. Big Sean, what are your thoughts? And then we'll move on to Opti. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just amazing to think that you know, there's there's villages or cities in the middle of nowhere and in, in places like Africa who may have been cut off from the financial world that now have a chance and they don't have to find oil in their in the ground. Right. They don't have to find something like that or gold or whatever it is that they would find historically to make their city have have some type of financial relevance. All they have to find is is do we have an energy source? And if we have an energy source, then we can mine Bitcoin and be plugged into the financial world as Bitcoin continues to grow. And, and another interesting thing is that article talked about, you know, Eastern Africa. I, I've talked to Cal who's, who's, you know, he goes back and forth from Ethiopia. He's Ethiopian 
um, and there's a big dam in Ethiopia that's not even being used. And so it'll be interesting to see, you know, how many things are there like that in, in Africa that aren't even being used that are power sources that these countries can, can literally plug into the Bitcoin network, make Bitcoin stronger and make themselves more relevant and, and not have to rely on countries like France who are holding them back um, and maybe not Ethiopia, but other countries in West Africa that, that have to go through France and are basically under this colonialism financially because France, they have to go through France when they do any importing and exporting. So I think all of these things are, are crazy important for countries and people who have been held back. And, uh, you know, a lot of times we don't recognize this when we're living in the United States, but there's a lot of people that are going to benefit extremely from Bitcoin and what it can provide for them. A hundred percent. Opti? I love that take, Sean. Um, and then just to add, guys, like we've been saying it for a long time on the show that the adoption of Bitcoin by third world countries is going to catapult these countries into a more prosperous future. And we're seeing it happen in real time. And, and uh, you know, we are Americans and we are in the U.S. And the U.S. has a lot to lose if they don't start adopting Bitcoin in a more productive way. So it's like seeing more countries around the world, uh, you know, quote unquote, third world countries adopting Bitcoin is definitely bullish for Bitcoin coin for you know humanity like we like to talk about all the time but man i i hope that this puts i am an american i hope this does put pressure on our you know uh betters our politicians and uh, and uh the our central bankers to adopt bitcoin in in a more um, in like a smarter way, because the way that it's angling right now, uh, it's looking like a, it's going to be bad for us Americans. But man, Paxful has done a great job educating people down there in Africa. You know, the, we, we've talked about Machinkura and Azteco and having how they penetrated nine countries down there and they don't even need internet. All they need is their, their mobile phone. Like, and now we're seeing strike expand to Nigeria, Ghana, and Kenya. And we have Jack, um, you know, investing in uh, renewable mining energy sources like man it, it's really really bullish to be seeing this type of of news come out in in uh, the bear market obviously and we've said it in the past man the fact that people are investing in bitcoin infrastructure right now it's going to be an awesome bull market once number comes back but this did remind me of a point that marshall and adam made on the simply bitcoin irl and when they were talking about how impressive it will be once bitcoin mining takes hold in africa because of what nico was saying there's a lot of wasted energy and the industries that can be built up around bitcoin mining will unlock, unlock so much human potential that it's just it's absolutely awesome to see these Bitcoin theories, you know, quote unquote theories that we always talk about in the game theory of Bitcoin taking hold and Bitcoin actually helping humans and helping humanity at large. And, and it's doing what we say it does. It's not just, uh, you know, what people like to paint us Bitcoiners as being as, as, us, as of us being first world financially privileged people, you know, just just basically speculating on Bitcoin. Like people around the world are seeing Bitcoin for what we know it to be. It's, it's a hedge against hyperinflation. It's a way for you to save it's a way for you to avoid the debasements by your your government and your your central banks and again censorship resistant money and also a way to tap into stranded energy sources so absolutely beautiful to see because guys bitcoin is actually helping planet earth do not fall for the fud and the narrative that it isn't because we're seeing it happen in real time guys and we bring the receipts every single day Absolutely. And another thing that I wanted to mention, which I think is the other announcement, which I think is kind of a big deal as well. Right. Uh, let's check out the press release. Um, so it says strike launches lightning fast money transfers to Africa. Strike the world's leading digit digital payments platform built on Bitcoin's lightning network today announced its send globally feature enabling instant low payment, low cost payments to Africa strikes send globally is available to all strike users in the U S starting today with initial coverage for Nigeria, Kenya, Ghana, quote, high fees, slow settlement, lack of innovation, cross border payments have negatively impacted the developing world with exorbitant fees to transfer funds in and out of Africa, incumbent providers, halting services, payment 
companies are struggling to operate in Africa. People cannot send money home to their families. Strike offers an opportunity for people to transfer the U.S. dollars easily, instantly across borders. Partnered with, with African payments platform Bitnob to enable instant payments to Africa, now using Lightning Rails under the hood. Strike's Send Globally feature provides users in the U.S. a cheaper, faster, more innovative way to instantly send payments to Africa. So it's very interesting. Um, and now if you compare this United Nations uh, press release, um, which we covered, we've been referring to this so many times, right? The United Nations spells out actions to curb cryptocurrencies in developing countries. And basically this whole article is talking about, um, basically we must de-incentivize the adoption of uh, cryptocurrency. So we know it's Bitcoin. That's the only one that, you know, provides true financial sovereignty. They also touch on stable coins as well. This is a quote from the article or, pre or report. It says, if cryptocurrencies become a widespread means of payment, even replace domestic currencies unofficially, a process called crypto cryptoization. This could jeopardize the monetary sovereignty of countries. I mean, Fine, but who's benefiting from that quote monetary sovereignty? I, I, the Sean Harris touched upon it earlier, right? When, when you said, um, when you said that basically a lot of countries are basically in a new form of neocolonialism through the Central African franc, right? Which it's actually France that controls that monetary policy, and you could make the argument that is that really monetary sovereignty? Like is El Sa does does El Salvador have more or more or less monetary sovereignty now that it has, you know, added Bitcoin as legal tender? Because before, their monetary policy was solely dictated by the United States. So do they really are they really sincere when they're saying monetary sovereignty? And then they do mention the reasons to why people are opting out. They mentioned you know uh, uh, remittance payments. They mentioned also inflation and basically their so to this are central bank digital currencies right it says depending on a nation uh, a national uh, national capabilities and needs monetary authorities could provide a central bank digital currency or more readily a fast retail payment system but that doesn't solve the fundamental problem and i think the proof is in the pudding and here's this you know this medium article by uh, by our friends over at trezor and the name of the article is What's Fueling Bitcoin Adoption in Nigeria. And we've talked about Nigeria many times on this show because Nigeria is really interesting because it's estimated that around 30% of the Nigerian population, specifically the youth population, have already decided to opt out of their government currency. And in response, the Nigerian Central Bank released a central bank digital currency, right, which is, you know, the UN recommendation. And the central bank digital currency is very unpopular. Not that many people have adopted it and compare that to Bitcoin, a lot of people have adopted it. And, and then it kind of goes full circle as to why, why you think that is. Like, why is that the case, right? Well, the reason is simple. Central bank digital currencies don't solve the fundamental problem that a lot of these people that live in these countries have to endure, which is inflation. And, and specifically in a lot of these countries, they don't have single digit inflation, they have double digit inflation. Okay. So what better incentive to use something like Bitcoin versus a CBDC, right? A CBDC doesn't solve the inflation problem. And whether it's the White House, right, whether it's these reports by the United Nations, whether, you know, it's a report by the ECB, which we covered last week, they're all focusing on making payments better. But what's the point of making payments better if your country has 25, 30, 40% inflation, like fine. Okay, great. Like I could receive this money faster, but it doesn't solve the fundamental issue. And they always focus on, we must stop the, the adoption of Bitcoin, but they don't provide good alternatives. And I think what I see with, with, with Jack Mahler's in this case is that he's actually providing an alternative and it's not even necessarily using Bitcoin, the commodity, it's just using the Bitcoin network, right? So I'm seeing entrepreneur, I'm seeing entrepreneurs and I'm seeing the private sector do what the, what the private sector does and entrepreneurs fixing problems. And then I'm seeing the government and whatever, just kind of, listen, we must use P we must have people using central bank digital currencies because right. But they, they, it's not really to benefit people.
Um, so, and then kind of tie this in with what we've been talking about, the theme of this episode, which is this idea of Bitcoin in Africa. Bitcoin has the potential to completely change that continent, right? Get it out of the heels of, you know, in, in terms of uh, the countries that are using the, the Central African franc, right? Get it out of the heels of France and that neocolonialism. Alex Gladstein wrote uh, an excellent article we're going to cover in the next couple of days, right? And it's going to give these countries an opportunity, right? It's going to give the individuals of these uh, countries an opportunity. Why do you think people are using something like Bitcoin? Because think about it. Think about all the hoops that you need to jump through just to receive money from so from someone overseas, right? Like good luck if you're in Nigeria receiving money from someone overseas. There, there isn't a good solution to that, right? With Bitcoin, it's... You know, if it's lightning, it's instantaneous, right? If it's the main chain, it takes you know roughly ten minutes, give or take, right, for that for for that transaction to confirm, and you can receive it, and that person doesn't even know their name, and and think about all the economic opportunity that comes with that, right? If if you're in Nigeria now, all of a sudden you can offer work to someone overseas because they could pay you now. And before there was no there was no good option for that, so. I, look, I, I hate the excuses from the word, and hate is a strong word, but I'm going to use it. I hate the excuses from the IMF. I hate the excuses from the World Bank. I hate the excuses from the White House. The reality is that Bitcoin fixes a lot of these things. Unfortunately for them, it also it it also makes individuals ask a very important question, which I think is a is is a fundamental threat to them, which is why are we being forced to earn and receive and save in a money that is designed to lose value. And I think that question becomes a lot more intense if you live in a country that has crazy inflation like Lebanon, right? Why are we being forced to do that? Where now we have an alternative and that alternative, not only does it not lose value, in fact, your purchasing power increases over time. And that's a very difficult question for them. They've been avoiding that question like the plague. They've just been focusing on, we need to make better payments. Better payments doesn't fix inflation. And I think that the, uh, the people on the continent of Africa are going to be asked this question a lot faster and they're going to opt out of their systems a lot quicker, therefore benefit from Bitcoin faster than people in the West. Because I think people in the West are just bread and circuses, man. Zell, PayPal, Venmo, it makes it very easy. Uh, now they're trying to normalize. It's going up from 2% to like, they're trying to normalize 3 4% inflation. You're still being stolen from in the West. But the theft is at such a rate that perhaps it's not that noticeable, but it's still there. Anyway, Sean, Yellow Yellow has spoken. And he, wants, <laughs> he wants you to speak. What are your thoughts on all this, bro? First of all, I love the chat. Like the chat in Simply Bitcoin is, is amazing. Um, and then what I'd have to say is people just naturally, uh, it's, it's biological. You're going to gravitate towards the hardest money. And the reason is because people want to save in the thing that's that's the best vehicle for savings. And, and that's why people will gravitate towards Bitcoin. You know, you see this you see this in these countries that are these third world countries, developing countries, because they realize that there's a big pain problem that they can't save in their local currency. And so when the, when these articles mention things like monetary sovereignty, who are they talking about? Right? Are they talking about the sovereignty of monetary sovereignty of the countries or the modern or the mon monetary sovereignty of the people? And I think that's the biggest thing to focus on is that each individual person gains monetary sovereignty through Bitcoin. They don't gain like I don't gain mon monetary sovereignty by holding dollars because I'm American or by holding whatever whatever currency that I live in, whatever country that I live in, their local currency. And I think that's something really important to focus on is is these are just words that are being thrown around without any meaning behind them. And, you know, and to recognize what is true monetary sovereignty. It's being able to earn, earn money, to keep my money, and to be able to save in that. And if I can't save in a currency in the country that I live in, then, then essentially I'm a slave because I can't, I can't hold my money long enough to actually buy something. And if, I don't, and if I can't buy things that matter, then I have no ownership. And if I have no ownership, 
then I'm a slave because I don't have rights to ownership. And I think that's one of the biggest things that's going on is that we're seeing is, is that the CBDC is essentially taking away rights of ownership. There's, they're going to put, they're going to put limits or, or expiration dates on your money. And, and that's what you have with inflation. Inflation essentially is an expiration date on your money because what it tells you is, if you hold on to your money long enough, it's going to be debased so much that it, it, that it expires, that it's worth nothing. And, and that's what inflation is. It's an expiration date on your money, which turns you into a financial slave because you can't have rights of ownership. And that's what Bitcoin solves. Absolutely. And, and, I, and you hit the nail on the head, right? Specifically, like, and think about it, right? In a country that has double digit inflation, how do you own something right it's 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 it, how do you how do you it, it's very difficult right it's very difficult to just just transact right and i think that bitcoin really protects your property like nothing else man like there's nothing else that could protect your bit uh, protect your bit your property like bitcoin like it, it's just like it, it, it's it's a complete contract and i think that his history has shown that private ownership is very very good for economies man and i think that most of the world hasn't had that privilege they 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 weren't able to do that effectively um without the fear of confiscation without the fear of debasement and i think bitcoin fundamentally changes this anyways opti what are your thoughts and then we'll move on to the culture well you know i love seeing the adoption of bitcoin in africa and i love that you brought up the the point of nigeria's inera cbdc's and we talk about it all the time about the fact that uh when they try to roll out their cbdc they always frame it in one way and it's better payment and we know why people are adopting bitcoin is because people are tired of getting debased people are tired of these high inflation rates and it's starting to look like bitcoin or i mean africa is is becoming the bitcoin continent you know and you love to see it and i can't wait to see this take hold in more countries and we bring up that uh what's it the un untad the un article all the time and man it's just it's just further proof that the un does not care about you you know they don't care about your savings they they will frame this in any way to try to maintain control but we understand what's going on over here as bitcoiners because we have disintermediated money we have literally taking the power of the money printer out of their hand and all we simply want to do is just be able to hold a money that we can save in that doesn't rob us slowly that we can send wherever we want yeah exactly the untad prosperity for all there is only one money that is truly prosperity for all and that is bitcoin and this is why countries around the world are adopting bitcoin and this is why uh you know first world countries and totalitarian countries are doing their best to try to ban bitcoin but you can't ban bitcoin you can only ban yourself and your citizens from bitcoin and the free market will take hold and you know people will adopt bitcoin because it's an opt-in system by individuals and individuals that still have a brain that still have some sense of critical thinking will save in the best money and bitcoin is that best money so we're just seeing this happen in real time guys and it's just beautiful to be a part of it it's, it's amazing to be on the front lines with you guys and continue to cover this stuff because it's happening guys like the world is adopting bitcoin it may be slower than we like but man it's the depth of the bear market and we are seeing all kinds of adoption around the world and it's only a matter of time until these monetary demons have been completely defunded because individuals has taken back their money. So, and, and just to uh, add on to what Sean said, well, I can't really add on, but I really love that meme. You said inflation is just money with an expiration date. That's a, that's a solid, solid framing that I think uh, I'm going to steal from here on out. Shouts out to you, bro. Amen. All right, everybody, let's get to the culture. The daily culture. Brought to you by SwanBitcoin.com. Swan is the best way to build your Bitcoin stack with automated Bitcoin savings plans and instant purchases serving clients of any size from $10 to $10 million. We love Swan because they incentivize self-custody and dollar cost averaging. What are you waiting for? Visit SwanBitcoin.com today. I also want to give a shout out to 
the BitBlock Boom Conference. It's a true Bitcoin conference network with fellow Bitcoiners in Austin, Texas, August 24th, 25th, 26th, 27th, 2023. This is not a shitcoin NFT or blockchain event. We talk about Bitcoin, Bitcoin, and more Bitcoin. Definitely go check out BitBlock Boom. You can take advantage of the promo code, all caps, simply Bitcoin, to get a discount on your BitBlock Boom tickets. Opti and I are going to be there as well. Anyways, Opti, what do you have for us today, bro? Oops, wrong one, wrong one. All right, guys. Sean Harris starts every morning with one of the greatest memes. Good morning. Crypto is slavery. But this isn't what we're going to talk about. This is just to continue to beat, beat the drum of there's Bitcoin and there is shitcoin. But as I told you guys in the beginning, uh, me and Sean go back and forth all the time on Twitter because... I know him to be Big Sean Harris, the professional basketball player, and I go back and forth. I used to play sports, so I, I live by the idea of proof of work, and I've been saying to you guys for a long time that proof of work is much more than just Bitcoin mining. It is a life philosophy, and as a professional athlete, Big Sean Harris has all kinds of wisdoms in regard to what this idea, proof of work as a life philosophy, really means. But one of his best memes that have gone around on Twitter is everything is basketball. So, Big Sean, maybe you can jump in here. And what, what do you mean when you say everything is basketball? And I do have some more some more of your, your wisdom on Twitter. But for those listening in the audio spaces, what where, where are you going with this idea of everything is basketball? Well, the matter of the fact is, is that everything is basketball. And, and if you and I don't have the time to if you don't get it, if you don't understand it, I don't have the time to to explain. <laughs> love it. I absolutely love it. OK, guys. Well, this next one. Oh, wait, hold on. You were just talking about something very, very good on this show. And I found this tweet, and I think it's, it's only fitting that we jump into this. So first, this is a response to a tweet by Laser hard awake to bitcoin and he goes money is not a belief system it is coordinating tool with measurable properties good money as good properties even when everybody doesn't believe in it yet and big sean responds with an, a dart and he goes money is not money because we all decide on it there are certain characters it's a money that make one better than another so sean as we kind of touched on in the news segment what are these characteristics and as we can see the world is waking up to this so uh, for those that aren't deep down the rabbit hole like us, maybe you can do a little synopsis of what do you mean by this tweet right here? Yeah, exactly. I think, uh, you know, a lot of people, when you tell them that Bitcoin is money or you talk about like the history of money, why certain people have decided to pick different monies, people think that the reason that money is money is because there's a belief system around it and that we all believe that this is money. So that's why it is. And that was like a common misconception that I fell into when I was first studying about money and studying about Bitcoin and all these things, because you just it's just it's just like the same narrative that you hear. Oh, well, we all believe it's money. And that's why. And that's not why. Like The reason why monies exist is because there's certain properties of money or certain characteristics of money that are exhibited in better monies than other monies. And, you know, some of those money, some of those characteristics would be durability divisibility, portability, um, and, and one of the biggest ones is scarcity. And monies that are not scarce, uh, like the dollar, uh, end up being counterfeited, end up being manipulated at the base layer. And when, they be, and when they're counterfeited and when, and when they're uh, manipulated like that, people lose trust in the money and the money gets debased and it goes away. And that's what we've, we've seen, you know, if you read the Bitcoin standard, right, one of the things that they talk about are the glass beads, right, in, in West Africa and Portugal comes down and they have a way of creating these glass beads. And so because they could create the glass beads that the Africans couldn't back in the day, then they manipulated their currency and made everyone poor. And that's exactly what's going on today. You know, whether you want to call it quantitative easing or money printing or counterfeiting, that is exactly what the Federal Reserve, the Central Bank of the United States is doing with the dollar is they're, they're counterfeiting the dollar and making everyone else poor through the process. You get some horns on that one. Big Sean Harris is smart. All right, this next one, I've covered this on uh, the culture segment, but since I have you in the flesh, I'm going to I'm gonna mash two of your tweets together, two of your famous sayings together, in my opinion. The first one, for those in the audio and for the spaces, Bitcoin is not about me. It was not created for me to get rich. Stop thinking about yourself when you buy Bitcoin and start thinking of others. It is our duty. And I found this other one that I really love. 
It could have been part of the meme review, but it's a big Sean Harris quote. How you make your money is just as important as how much money you make. Bitcoin is honest money. So big Sean Harris, uh, what, what, uh, what is this Zen philosophy you're talking about here? And uh, maybe you can elaborate for the people out there. Yeah, the, the, this is so the first the first tweet that you showed is really something that, you know, Bitcoin is not about me. Like Satoshi did not create Bitcoin. It's not written in the white paper that he created Bitcoin to get rich. And it's not a speculation about me getting rich or about any of us getting rich. And the reason that I tweeted that was because I, I just got to the point where, you know, we've slayed so many of these OG heroes quote unquote heroes like a Jameson Lops or Pomps or whoever. And when I came into the, to this space and I was learning, there was a lot of people that I thought were, were leading me down the right path and were, but they really just cared about getting rich and because they cared about getting rich and they thought that Bitcoin was here to make them rich, then they started to, to dabble in the altcoins and show what everything they could if they would get paid that money. And so they were getting paid dishonest money. And if Bitcoin is freedom money, then I shouldn't have to be getting paid. I shouldn't have to be getting paid or compromising my morals to, to promote Bitcoin because then, I, then I'm not free anymore. And that's the whole point of having Bitcoin is to be free. And so when you think about, when you think about all this stuff, it was not created for me to get rich. And it's our duty. I look at it, if I'm given this knowledge, well, then it's my duty to help other people who are truly looking for something that's real and of substance. And because I was that I was that kid, I was that person looking for the truth, looking for, you know, what is where where does Bitcoin fall in all of this? And I was led down the wrong path for probably two years until I finally could figure it all out. And so it just it just upsets me. And I get passionate about this because there's people that should have led us in the correct way. You know, Novogratz, Rao Pal, all of these guys. And instead, they decided to cash out. And that's what makes me mad. And I'm going to keep pushing and I'm going to push even harder because the people that are out there that are searching for Bitcoin deserve to find it. Bars. All right. We got one more. Uh, and I'm going to I'm going to use this tweet to go into the last thing that I want to talk about here. Uh me and you kind of go back and forth a lot on Twitter saying essentially the same thing. And you put in a tweet here and you said, be strong. We are in the truth. The war is for the mind. Endure the hard times with cheer to appreciate the good times. And I say this as much as I can on this show. Be a shining example of being a Bitcoiner. Stay positive. Stay optimistic. But that's not the that's not what I want to talk about. We have the having party in 2024. So in El Salvador, and I know Big Sean Harris wants to show this. So guys... Make sure you make it there, but I am going to give the floor for Big Sean Harris to talk about the having party. Again, like the, the having to me is one of the most important things. It's so simple and it's not something that's super hard to understand, right? And I think that's one of the important things about the having is the having is this thing where it's like literally every four years, half, uh, you know, the, the amount of Bitcoin that gets mined or gets issued gets cut in half. And what that causes is a price spike. And you see that every four years. And there's these four-year cycles in Bitcoin. And this is one of the things that, that I've been trying to tell people, you know, regular people in my life, that, they, that everyone knows about Bitcoin now. But if you talk to people, they don't really know about what the having is. So if you, they say, oh, I think that Bitcoin is a Ponzi or I think it's interesting or whatever they have, any idea that they have about Bitcoin, and if you take it one step further and you go, what do you think about the having? They go, I don't even know what that is. Right. And so it's not this thing that's super hard to understand. And this is this is what is very important. It's a good signal for people who haven't understood what Bitcoin is yet. So the having we're having the having party. We're having it in Bitcoin country, El Salvador, because it's the only country that has made Bitcoin legal tender. Um, we're, we're having that at an awesome resort uh over 500 rooms and we're inviting every bitcoiner to come down uh if you're interested in bitcoin you want to learn about bitcoin you will this will be less of a conference more of a party type feel um there's going to be unlimited food unlimited drinks alcoholic non-alcoholic so the difference is you know if you go to a, a a conference in 
in Miami or in LA or wherever you pay for the conference, you pay for the, your hotel. And then you also are paying a ton for your drinks and for food and whatever at, at the having party, it's going to be all inclusive. So you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. It's going to be awesome. Um, tickets are not on sale yet, but go follow the having party account. Um, it's having party MF, uh, H A L V I N G party MF. So go follow it and we'll keep you updated and it's going to be awesome. We're going to get some of the best Bitcoiners down there. Uh, you know, we're going to get these two, these two fools from simply Bitcoin down there. And, uh, it's honestly, my next goal is to get Bukele to, to say yes. I've already Let's met up. With, I met up with Max and Stacy down there. Uh, we're getting Texas slim down there with the beef initiative. Going to have some good beef initiative beef down there. It's going to be insane. Let's go. I can't wait, man. The having is upon us. You guys better make it to El Salvador. Actually, uh, Nico, I know we're running a little late, but I, can we tell your having story, Sean, on why you wanted the having party? Because I, I think it's kind of hilarious. Yes. So the, really the reason why is because the last having in 2020, um, I'm all excited for it. I'm pumped. I'm like, what, what are we going to do? What's, what's the deal? And then I get online and I'm watching Anthony Pompliano crack open a beer. And I'm like, this is the lamest having ever. Like, we have to make this better. <laughs> this is this is the Olympics of Bitcoin. This is the World Cup of Bitcoin. We have to do something special and celebrate what the having is and what it means to Bitcoin. Let's go. Amen. We'll see you guys in 2024 in El Salvador. Hell yeah. I'm I'm so freaking pumped. We will definitely be there. We will be live streaming from El Salvador at that oh, point. Oh, snaps. Super, super bullish. Anyways, everybody, let's get to the meme review. The Daily Meme Review. Brought to you by Kaboom Racks. I get this question all the time. Nico, where should I buy Bitcoin miners? The answer is Kaboom Racks. It's the best place to buy Bitcoin miners. That's where you're going to find the best deals and the best prices. Start your mining utopia today. To check out their racks, you got to go to t.me slash Kaboom Racks. Join their Telegram group and start your mining journey today. Kaboom Racks. Kaboom racks. All right, guys, you already know this is the meme review. Drop your meme review score in the chat. Tweets are the bullets. Memes are the artillery. And you guys are the frontline soldiers. Continue to spread the signal. Continue to get the calls of action out there. And continue to ridicule all the shit coiners and all the fiat maxis because Bitcoin is the way. And everyone will figure it out soon enough. Anyways, this first one, this first meme is by Igor Petrov. Uh, probably butchered that. And he goes, Satoshi Nakamoto navigating time. And I really love, I really love what you're doing, uh, Igor, with these, with this artistic take, this this new lane that you're going, bro. It's it's super awesome to see all these takes. And as you guys for the space watching, it's like this very zen Satoshi Nakamoto with a clock behind him. He's got a big old Bitcoin clock vest warrior piece on him <laughs> I don't know. and he's a wizard uh this next one oh, it's another wizard. igor it's another wizard. igor take but this one is posted by michael sailor and he goes time for bitcoin and it's again this this very awesome artistic take of bitcoin as time and bitcoin being the clock that continues to push just into this bright orange future and this next one is <laughs> this is a good one uh this one's by finn finn j and he goes me if the weave hired me and we got claus schwab and he goes we need more bitcoin fud and we got uh everyone's favorite coin is violence dude and he goes my new thesis is titled bitcoin a peer-to-peer -peer electronic full auto nuke launcher with no safety switch and we got chrissy shouts out to x chrissy lagarde and he says we couldn't think of anything new so we just said it's dead again and then we got finn j over here or we we could just quit start providing real value to society and save the proceeds in bitcoin and it's the meme where they throw them out the window because they don't like what he's saying this is what we try to tell everyone in regards to bitcoin just provide the value and save in sats and your life will be so much better and then of course i didn't even know nico was going to be talking about cbdc's a little bit but we touched on this in the news segment in regards to nigeria's inera and we dropped this meme yesterday uh, cbdc's be like how do you do fellow kids and always how do you do better payments and rave elevator added on top of it and he goes bitcoin only i don't care what they say i'm just as good as bitcoin and uh i forget which movie this is but it's cbdc putting lipstick on them and oh wait is this a 
It's like a, anyways, I, I, I'm blanking. Uh, this next one, shouts out the Dirt Gigi. I think this one is hilarious. And he goes, once you realize the implications of Bitcoin, you will find a second job to stack more sats. And he's got Jordan Peterson uh, over here cutting this monkey's hair. <laughs> and it's a really bad Photoshop of it. And that's why it makes it such a good meme. All right. And this last one, shouts out to Meme Bitcoin. They're doing a great job with the memes out there. And he goes, how Bitcoin works. And you can see the Bitcoin network and it's everyone that is just an orange anon pseudonymous user of Bitcoin saying, yes, I verified everything. Yes, I verified everything. And they're all interconnected and everyone's verifying their Bitcoin transactions. Guys, this is why we tell you to run a node, verify your own transactions, stop trusting people and take your money back. Amen. Anyways, Amen. for my meme review score. I'm going to give it page 97 sign. You are a Bitcoiner is you take every opportunity to orange pill someone. If you pay in Bitcoin, I'll take care of this other cavity for you. No charge. Shouts out to Bitcoin for kitties. 99 signs. You are a Bitcoin maxi. I will be using all of them forever here on out because I am running out of scores. Anyways, <laughs> big Sean, what is your score? Nico, Nico, what's your score? I'm going to give it this tour up. 2,000 pesos from the Dominican Republic. Oh, oh okay. Oh, which I think, is like, I think is like 10 bucks. 10 bucks? Hold on. I got I got something. Now you're thinking about money. I got some change here. I'm going to give it a, a, one, a one euro coin. Oh. Ooh. 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 Exchange, exchange it for sats. I should have exchanged that for sats already. We're all, show, we're all showing shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. We we got a uh, we got score. We got actual scores today. So we got uh Ad Mimonix. He goes eleven out of ten. Uh we got Z Logic. He says a basketball out of ten. Um, let's see, let's see. We got Old school millennial. I give these memes a basketball. We got rope over here. He goes rating those memes. Sean's a hundred K sat payment to me for his team getting blown out. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> uh, we got Igor. I give the memes the best L and D rapper in town. Okay. Okay. Uh, Becca, she goes, I rate these memes with five deflated basketballs. <laughs> ooh, ooh, that bad. Dang. Okay. Frank Arn, he goes, I give this meme the three penalty kicks Spain missed. Oof. Oof. Ooh. And Mr. Robot, he goes, give those memes having party with lesbian midgets and cold calls. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't read that one. Sorry, Nico. Anyways, uh, this last one, Opti's Itty Bitty Plebby Club score in Itty Bitty over 10. Yes, yes. Uh, one last one by Ooh. Andres, and he goes, one mean heckle by Andres courtside. Ooh. Yes, if you know, if you, you know. know. You know. All right, all right. All right, are we out of time? <laughs> We are out of time. The buzzer says so. We are out of time. The buzzer says so. Anyways, anyways, guys, check out Simply Bitcoin's Telegram group. It's absolutely free. You got to go to www.t.me slash Simply Bitcoin TV. That's where you can link us Bitcoin memes review. Also, check out the written version of this show. Written version of this show, Simply Bitcoin Unfiltered. Go to www.simplybitcoin.news. Shout out to our awesome writers, Rustin, Winekiss, Paul, Zach, dropping the sauce all the time. Anyways, Opti, do we have a software release? or Yes, process? I have a software release. Software, software release. release. All right, everybody, let's check it out. Bitcoin software release. Brought to you by CypherSafe. Don't be that person that loses their Bitcoin seed due to fire damage, water damage, dog attacks. Back up your generational Bitcoin wealth on steel and there's no better place to do it than the cypher grid by cypher safe and now check out their new bitcoin art the bitcoin rulux triangle only on cyphersafe.io okay guys so for today's software release we got bdk version 0.25.0 and it's got improved sync time and if you guys don't know the bdk library aims to build the core building blocks for bitcoin wallets of any kind so if you are a developer out there 
Uh, go get that new new. And uh, this release fixes slow sync times and big script pub keys table with SQ Lite. The wallet rescans height for the fully noted expert and setting the network for keys in the key map when using descriptor templates. Also added our new blockchain and mnemonic examples, guys. So definitely go check out BDK version 0.25 if you are a developer out there building things because it is the bear market and Bitcoiners are definitely building. I am building. I am building. Absolutely. Absolutely. I also want to give a very special shout out to our clothing sponsor, Opti. You're going to be the model today. Show off the front, show off the back. Check it out. It's the orange pill. Decentralized. Trust no one. It's dope. You can take advantage of the promo code simply dash Bitcoin to get a discount. Represent LTD.com. I also want to give a very special <laughs> shout out to our awesome guest, um, Big Sean. Thank you for joining us today. Why don't you tell everybody where they could find you on Twitter? Yes, uh, on Twitter, Big Sean Harris, S E A N, right? Uh, and uh, you can just find me anywhere else too, right? Meme Factory, we do the Meme Factory podcast uh, live Thursdays, seven thirty p.m. and that's Eastern time. You know, the having party would not happen without the Meme Factory, so I'd be remiss to not mention everyone, everyone there. It's gonna be a blast, and and uh, just everyone come out, come come check out El Salvador, make the pilgrimage down there. And um, and Marcus, Plan Marcus and I, we also do Bitcoiners Guide on Tuesdays. So don't worry about that. Uh, just, you know, just find me on Twitter and uh, you'll see everything. Awesome. Big Sean, thank you so much for joining us on Simply Bitcoin Live. All right, guys, that was the show. If you enjoyed the show, you know what to do. Smash that like button. Consider subscribing if you feel like we provided you value. But the number one thing you could do to help the peaceful Bitcoin revolution is share this content share it far and wide in fact share all bitcoin content get on the mission and of course guys if you want to continue the party we are running a twitter spaces all the way to 2 p.m with our friends over at swan bitcoin and if you want to inter chance to interact live with opti big sean i think he's going to be there as well unfortunately i can't make it today but i will be, i will be there tomorrow um, so yeah, join the Simply Bitcoin spaces. It's a party. Opti holds it down. We love you all and we'll see you tomorrow for a brand new episode of Simply Bitcoin Live. <laughs>